Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. Today I will show you how to use epoxy resin to create a revolving magnetic pigment rack so that you can get on top of the game with your craft room storage. In fact, I'll be showing you how to make two, a wall mounted one and a desktop one. So if that sounds good to you, stay tuned and enjoy the video. To create the tiers for my pigment rack, I used this mould set from Resin Pro. It's a cake stand mould set and I'm just using the smallest one. It works out perfectly because it makes a hole in the middle with this mould. The first step is the most important step in today's project and that is to create the guide to go behind the mould. I took a sheet of printer paper and a pair of compasses and I measured out roughly the size of the mould. I kind of took my measurement of the inner section of the mould. It doesn't need to be exactly the same size, just a bit smaller is fine. And then I just drew the circle onto the paper. Now, I'd already worked out that each of my tiers on my pigment rack would hold 12 of my bottles of pigment and so I needed to separate the circle into 12 sections. Now there's a few ways of doing this but I found that my favourite way was the old school way. I don't know if you used to do this as a child with your compasses but I found that it's the best way to make it into six sections and then go halfway and make another six sections. You just need to watch. It's hard for me to explain but you'll get the drift. You just go to each new point that you've just drawn and do another half circle and you end up with like a six petaled flower design doing it this way. I didn't alter the size of the compasses, I just kept it exactly the same size as it was to draw the circle and then I did the half circles. So there I had my six points but I needed 12 so then I went halfway between two points and did exactly the same thing again. There's, you know, other ways of doing it. You could try, I, I don't think it would work folding your paper and going along the folds. I tried that and I couldn't get 12. <laughs> um, that might be obvious to some people, but I'm not a mathematician. Um, that didn't work for me. So that's why I did it this way. But you could use a protractor and measure out the angles if you want to do it that way. But yeah, like I said, this way works best for me. Next, I just used my ruler to draw a straight line from the centre to each point. And then I put the mould into position and put the bottles onto the mould just to work out exactly where I wanted my bottles to be positioned. And then once I knew where, where they would be in relation to the edge of my guidelines, I could measure the same distance 12 times. So I worked out that I wanted each of my magnets to be 1.5 centimetres from the edge of my guidelines. And so I measured 1.5 centimetres from every point in that diagram. And then I knew where my magnets would need to be positioned. I ordered these super strong magnets to use in my tiers for my pigment rack and these are what the bottles will stick to. However, I did find that they weren't quite strong enough to use in my resin tiers. So yeah, don't, don't get the ones I'm using here. They worked well for, you know, what I'm doing now. I kept them in position once I'd put them down. They were fine for my guide, but yeah, I'll link to the ones that you do need. Um, <laughs> I'll link to those ones in the description because these ones really weren't quite strong enough. Uh, yeah, so never mind. This still works on my guide and you'll it'll all make sense in a few minutes. So what I'm doing now 
is marking the top of each one because as you will know magnets have one side that attracts and one side that repels and you need to make sure all your magnets are the right way up and it's easy to get confused if you don't mark them with a pen so that's what I'm doing now I'm just marking the top of the um, stick of magnets so that I have 12 all marked and then I can make sure they're all the same way around. Then I used some clear tape just to stick them all into position and it's as simple as that. So really everything you've just seen that's the hardest part all done and it might seem a little bit time consuming but you really do need this guide. This is what makes everything else really really super easy. Okay, the preparation is complete and now it's time for the easy bit. I've mixed up 90 grams of Resin Pro's transparent resin and I've put in some colour fun black pigment paste into that as well. And I'm just adding a small amount of the resin into the mould over where the magnets will be. And then I'm going to add the magnets. And at this stage, I'd bought some more magnets, which did work really, really well. They look the same. They're just a bit thicker and stronger. Anyway, all you need to do is take your magnet, hold it above where the guide shows the magnets need to be. And the magnets underneath, which you've stuck to your guide, will just attract the magnets that you're holding and they'll just drop into place really simply and that's why that guide was so important because that way you've got no problem positioning your magnets the same every time and you can just use it again and again and again. And of course, once you've finished making your project, you can take those magnets off the guide, just remove the sticky tape and you can use the magnets for something else another time. So once I'd placed my 12 magnets, it was time to put in the rest of the resin and allow it to cure. And that's how simple it is. You could do something fancy if you want, but I just wanted mine plain black. I didn't want to overcomplicate things. But yeah, use your imagination if you want to make yours coloured. Of course, you could do that. I think the reason I decided on black was so that it hid the magnets and, you know, they weren't so obvious. Right, because the bottles hang underneath on each tier, I decided it would be nice to have something that could be stored on the top of the, you know, of the pigment rack, rather than it just being plain and nothing on it. So I thought, hmm, if I put bottles and things on the top tier, they could fall off quite easily. And I didn't want things slipping off all over the place. So I decided to put some stones around the edge of this one. And they're just some stones from Hobbycraft that I had in this jar. And I'm just choosing the tallest ones which I can position around the edge to make a barrier. To get them into position, I decided it would be a good idea to use some UV resin so that I could get them to where I want them and they wouldn't move. So each time I put a stone on, I added a bit of UV resin and used my UV torch just to cure it very quickly before adding my black resin in the same way as before. However, it's not essential because I did find out later on when I made another one that if you just pour in your black resin as before, but allow it to get really thick and to the point where it's curing. Then you can add your stones and it, they should stay stood up. So yeah, this is an option, but it's not essential. Once the stones were in place, I just did exactly the same thing as before by placing it onto the guide, adding the magnets and the resin. And then that was another tier done. Although this time I did try adding all the resin first and then adding the magnets and it wasn't as easy because you couldn't really see your guide underneath to know where to put the magnets because if you're not careful your magnets will if you if you get too close to the one you've just put down it will go over and stick to it so yeah do it the way I did it the first time add a little bit of resin then your magnets and then the rest of the resin. 
Okay, so I now had two magnetic tiers complete and I just needed to make a base because this one I was going to make like a cake stand in the same kind of way with my bits that came with the mould set. And so yeah, I needed a base and that's all I'm doing here. No magnets on this one. Okay, all my tears are prepared and now it's time to do the lids from my pigment bottles. And I've turned over my guide. That's quite important because if you use the other side, your magnets will be facing the wrong way around and they won't <laughs> they won't stick to your tears for your pigment rack. So yeah, make sure you turn your guide the other way up and put your lids into position and then just simply drop the magnets in. You don't need to mark them this time. You only needed to mark them when you were making the guide because they will only be attracted one way. So you just drop them and they'll go the correct way. And then once they're all in, you can move the lids around. The magnets will stay in place. And as you move the lids, you can see the magnet change in position. Once I had all the magnets central inside the lids, I used some UV resin. I just squeezed a little bit over the magnets and cured it with my UV lamp. If you don't have UV resin, you could use normal resin. It's just that you're going to have to wait a long time for it to cure. And with UV resin, it's just two minutes, not hours and hours and hours. So, yeah, <laughs> it's... It's a winner for me. I love UV resin because of the speed of it. And of course, you don't need to use either of those things. If you wanted to, you could use some glue. Just super glue would probably do the trick just as well. You might be wondering what happens when you finish your bottle of pigment and then you're going to have to throw away the lid and you know, do all this again with your next bottle, but you don't because you just save the lid and swap it for the lid on your new pigment and you're ready to go again. I use these pigments all the time so I know next time I get a new set, I'll just swap the lids around once they're empty. So after two minutes, they were ready and ready to go back on the bottles. The only thing that I do need to mention is these bottles that I'm using are the Sahara pigments from Resin Pro and they come with a really cool little stop out with a hole in so you can just shake your pigment out. If you like using that stopper, then this won't work quite so well for you because you do need to take that out for these lids to fit back on. With Once they've got that magnet in, they don't fit on with the stopper. So yeah, that is a drawback, but I quite like using them without the stopper anyway. I, I like to scoop the pigment out. So yeah, it's something to bear in mind. I just use a fork to just pop the... Um, tine of the fork into the hole and lever it out and they come out really easily. So once everything was prepared it was time to put it together with my cake stand fittings which came with the moulds and there we have it as a tabletop pigment organiser. It looks great and it works great. I would say the only thing about it was it was a little bit wobbly and I think that's to do with the fixings. And yeah, it it was, wasn't a problem that it was a little bit wobbly. It was perfectly stable and it wouldn't fall over or anything like that. Uh, yeah, it was just a slight wobble and that was the only drawback. However, <laughs> I'm moving house in the summer and it's a great house. I love the house. The only issue is my craft room is going to be smaller and so I'm thinking very carefully about storage and I have lots and lots of these bottles so I got to thinking how about making a wall mounted one on a steel rod. Let's see what would happen if I made one like that which I could use tier after tier after tier after tier and have them all in one place. So that's what's coming now. Okay then, so I went onto Amazon and I got myself a one meter threaded rod. And that's what this is. And it's a M6 threaded rod. And that means it's six millimeters in diameter. 
So the nuts and the washers that you need to purchase to go with your rod need to be the same size. So I got the M6 rod and M6 um, nuts and washers. And that M6 size fits through the hole in the tiers perfectly. So I would recommend getting that size. The nuts I used are these rivet nuts and the only reason I used those was because I already had them from another project that I'd done previously. But you could just buy the normal nuts, you know, general purpose nuts and they will be just fine. So all you need to do is screw the nut onto the um, threaded rod until you get to the place where you want it to be. And what I did was I got a coffee stirrer and I cut it to the size of the space that I wanted between my rivet nuts because um, I'd already worked out the distance I wanted between each tier by hanging the bottle on and seeing what looked right. So I'd already worked that out so I cut the stirrer and then I could use that for everyone to make sure they were all equally spaced. So I put the nut on, then a washer, then the tier, then another washer and then the next nut. And here we have another one which I used stones on which can act as a shelf and that will go on the top above the bracket. Now here's the one of the brackets which I made. It was still a little bit wet because I'd just varnished it. But just to give you an idea, it's just two pieces of wood which I screwed together, made two holes in it to attach it to the wall and one hole for it to you know, for the rod to thread to. So that's basically all it is, an L-shaped bracket with two scrap pieces of wood, that, which I found and didn't really cut them very well. But it works. It works absolutely fine. So yeah, that's all I did for the brackets. I suppose you could purchase them. You could, you can probably buy something similar so you don't have to make them yourself. But yeah, I, I wasn't patient enough to order something and wait for it to come. I just made it. Now, the thing is, when because I wanted these um, tiers to be revolving, as you spin them round, it will cause the nuts to spin round and everything will end up travelling up and down the threaded rod. And you don't want that to happen. You want them to stay in position. So what I did was I took my glue gun and I just added a little bit of the glue onto the nut and the rod just like a pea size amount of the nut glue against the nut and the rod and that stopped the nut from going anywhere and then at a later date if you need to you know you want to change it around a little bit you can just take that glue off really easily it's not permanent if you wanted it to be permanent, you could use super glue or something like that to keep the nuts in place, but that's not what I wanted. So here we have it, mounted onto the wall and filled with pigments. And I love it. It works perfectly to hold all of my pigments in one place. Well, all of my Resin Pro pigments anyway. And I put it on my storage wall along with all my other pigments and other things that I've got stored on there. And it's really saved me a lot of shelf space. And so when I move house, I'll be able to take this down and put it in my new craft room and yeah I'm all prepared. So what do you think to my new pigment storage? Are you impressed? I am. <laughs> I'm impressed with myself this time. I thought it worked really really well and I love the magnetic feature the way the bottles just come off so easily and pop back on as soon as you finish with them. They just work so well and it looks nice as well you know it's better than having them hidden away in a box you can have them on display and it's all colorful and beautiful so yeah i'm really happy with it and i hope i've inspired you to have a go yourself if you enjoyed the video please click the thumbs up and leave me a comment or even subscribe if you haven't done so already and i will see you again next time bye for now